Uh, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um. So the original way I was gonna do this, um, kind of backfire. <laughs> Hello. The fuck? What's going on? Why is my lipstick not working? Hey, bitch. All right. I'm not dead. I promise I'm not dead. I I have returned. And well, yeah, as you as you can see, a lot of things have indeed changed. The original way that I was going to record this video kind of backfired. My original plan was to kind of take a different approach at making the video um by just recording it on my desktop with my voice over it and then I can add this uh if I wanted to. That backfired because the video ended up sounding like this. Good afternoon, YouTube. Obviously, that's not good quality YouTube content. Um, <laughs> so, now I have to do this. But, so, but it's probably best that I don't change something that works. Um, people seem to like this a little bit because my last video got... 380 something views i believe and five likes a whole five likes out of those 300 views <laughs> that is my most the most views i've ever had on any video ever on either channel so i i, I appreciate it thank you all for the uh, shut up jarvis <laughs> i appreciate the attention that y'all that y'all give me and I will try to give that same attention back in return instead of neglecting neglecting the channel. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. Um but we are we're back and in this and today's video I'm going to sh uh, be showing y'all how to you to update your project to use a cre creator companion if you haven't already and uh how to use the poly tool at least most of it because there because even though i have made uh even though i've made 91 avatars now i still don't use the poly tool all that often um because it's more of my uh fallback that's more my fallback uh what's it for my more my fallback tool So we need we need to actually get to the files first. So you'll either go to create new project or add existing project. In my case, it's going to be add existing project since I'm going to be going off the project that I had to had originally. Uh, where I don't even know where my camera is at, so I'm just going to look at my screen. Um, and mine's going to be under my mine's going to say legacy avatar, which means I'm going to need to update it. So I'm just going to click migrate project. And I'm going to migrate in place since I like to take risks for some fucking reason. Um, wait, what song is this on? Anyways, um, yeah, I just migrated in place. It's a hell of a lot faster than trying to make a copy. And I was trying to get this recording done so I could get it recorded or get it published to you guys. So um, I seem to like looking over there. Let me move my camera over there while this loads. Okay, looks like the project finally loaded. Um... It has been so freaking long. I think this is the old version of the Rexium. <laughs> I could be wrong about that, but... But this is one of the other things that I was busy with was trying to make all this. That's kind of what happened during December. As for the rest of the... As, the, as for the rest of that time, I really couldn't tell. I was more busy with work and trying to get motivation and everything. So you'll uh, double click it within your browser or cl or click in your explorer, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Click import. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know how to import shit, I'm sure, now. Um, it'll show up in your assets folder. And at the top, it's going to say file, file, edit, assets, game object, yada, yada, yada. All the way over is going to be, it's going to say plot tool. You want to click open. So we have a list of... 
upon um, upon opening the tool, you're immediately greeted with whatever version you're using, target, presets, and then preset options. That's what you're greeted with. So for target, you're just going to want to drag your uh, whatever avatar you're using into that target spot. That's basically going to tell Polytool what avatar it's targeting. Because you can have multiple avatars in a scene like I do. Or at least that's what I did with these things. Um, and you can just tell which one you want to target. Which it is helpful. But you can do anything from building a build, or building a build target. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, you can do anything from changing a build targets from w between Windows and Android. Uh, making it barely compatible for Quest, severely uh, compatible for Quest, making it where it shows by default, which is a good thing. Um, you can decimate the polygons, you know, take it down to a specific polygon count. So say your avatar has 3.6 uh, million polygons for some reason. I, 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 I couldn't tell you why that was, but just say you did. You can take it down to 100,000 if you needed to, or 70,000, or you can take it down to 2. So it just kind of depends on... Uh, what you want to do with this? Um, and then you see under preset options, you have operations. Basically, you can reorganize those to however you want to... I'm having a talk over myself, and it's, it feels weird. You can, uh, you can order those however you want, although save created assets really should be last. Um, other than that, they can be wherever they want. Platform change, it's relatively straightforward. All you need to know is you're only going to be using two out of all those groups that you see there. And that's going to be Android, Android, and standalone Windows. If I can fucking speak, that'd be great. Okay, Merge and Atlas at Meshes. This, um... It took me a minute to realize exactly what Atlas meant. But now that I know what it is, I'll tell you guys. Uh, merge, basically all that is... Um... Actually, I probably should follow the video, shouldn't I? Um, the output renderer that just that just tells that just tells Polytool what uh, mesh it's going to output to. Like for me, I only have the body and the credits theme or credits plane, um, so I don't really have a whole lot of options. But if you have like a jacket and a coat and the body and a yeah yeah yeah, you can specify which one you want to target. By default, I believe it's just going to pick body. Um, remove excluded renderers. I don't exactly sure what that means, but we'll just move on. Uh, merge. This is where the merging of the meshes happen. So, say... Pause. Say, for example, you have... Well, let's just use my avatar, for example. Say you have the base model itself, the t-shirt, the jacket, and then the, uh, sweatpants. Um, if you really wanted to, I don't really know why you would do that, but if you really wanted to, you can merge all this onto one mesh and just upload that to VR chat. And that's how you would do that. You would just tell it which ones you want to keep separate, which ones you want to keep, you know, uh, merged with the body, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so you got merge, which it, you can limit the bones, you can specify the bone limits, you can refresh bones, it'll tell you how many bones you got, how many bones it's going to remove, show the bone list, and then reset vertex colors. I really don't know what that does, I haven't used it. Um, and then you got atlas, this is where the merging of the avatar, or merging of the avatars, merging of the material comes in. Um, you can specify what kind of shader you want to use the textures that are provided, and the resolution of those textures. You can basically tell it what materials you want to keep, which ones you want to merge, and which ones you want to get rid of. That could be done through that ma the material submenu. And then if you want to get rid of the materials that you're not using, you can just do remove exclude materials. That's what that does. Materials with uh, remove materials with warnings. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't really know what remove materials with warnings does. I just know it's there. If you you're, if you um, probably mess around with it, you can probably figure out what it does. I don't know what increased padding does either. Oh no, I know what that does. That what that does is that uh, um, expands the space between each texture if needed at all. Uh, decimate. 
that's basically what uh, lowers your polygon count. So uh, you can set the mode. You can set it to all, single, multi multiple. All just does every all the meshes specified within the avatar that you chose at the very top under target. And um, single, it just does one single mesh that you specify. Multi, multi does multiple meshes that you specify. You, yeah, you can set you can set which meshes you want to target. Polygon target that just tell, that just tells you. Oh, I'm on UVs now. I did all that talking. And okay, pause. We're gonna leave it displayed for a minute. L I I need to catch up. <laughs> so polygon target that basically tells that tells the program. Let's try that again. <laughs> polygon target is what tells the program exactly how many polygons you would like to keep on the model. They it says current polygon count below it. That just tells you how many polygons you have already. I'm pretty sure it does say that in the SDK as well. Um, um, I'm trying to share a lot of my information with y'all, but I, some of this I don't know what it does, and I'm sorry, but I just don't. Reserve UV seam edges. I know, I know what that is. I know what a UV seam is. Some of y'all might know what a UV seam is, but I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what a UV seam is anyway. Um, and you smart folk, you can just sit there and eat a cookie or something, but. I mean, a minute ago, I was showing like a picture of the texture. I can go and throw a picture of the texture on there as well. You can see where there's bits and pieces of every texture on on there. You can see like p parts of the face, parts of the chest, but they're in all different places. The UV seams, they divide the model into sections, and those sections are uh, mapped to a 2D plane, which tell the texture that you make or is provided tells that where to go so, and that's how stuff like this is able to happen service curve for sure serve 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 uh serve the hungry preserve surface curvature i believe what that does is it tells the tool to keep the polygons to the surface of the model that's my best guess uh, outside of that. I really don't know what that does. Preserve or, or border edges. I don't even know what that means. Blend shapes, smart link. I'm sure. Well, that obviously has something to do with blend shapes. I think what the, I think what that does is it links the blend shapes to the new model. I haven't tested it. Okay, component remover. Uh, what this does is it takes off certain components for the model. Uh, I can do anything from static meshes, uh, skin meshes, animators, fizz bones, anything down to audio sources, cloth, uh, rigid bodies and joints, stuff like that. Anything that's listed there, if it's checked, it's going to remove it. There is no if, ands, or but about it. It's just going to remove it. That's just how overpowered this tool is. Um, this has come in handy for me a couple times. Uh, save create save created assets is only available for the professional version or, or the personal use version I guess is what they call it now. Um, this is basically where you can choose where you want to save the generated assets and it'll save them to that specified folder by default it's generated assets within the assets folder uh, you have the option to compress textures which will help uh, try to upload it to quest which is a good thing. And you can also export to FBX in case you want to take it outside Unity to another program. If you don't have any, if, if you don't have any experience with Blender or Substance, you don't need that. <laughs> it's it's just faster just to leave that unchecked. But I believe the video is nearing the end, so I'm so I already covered the tool, I already covered the VR check companion, so I'm just gonna stop the video now. Thank you all for watching. So sorry for such a long wait. I just have been unmotivated, you know, busy with work, busy around the house. You know, I told you all that already. But um, if you find this video helpful, do please leave a like. And any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave that as a comment. And uh, if you have someone else that's having trouble with the poly tool or the creator companion, feel free to share this video with them. This is what this is for. Outside of that, see you on the flip side.